Welcome to ETF Market Insights, a weekly show focusing on the evolving world of ETF investing. Each Friday, a new panel of thought leaders aims to provide investment education and insights with the goal of helping you become an informed investor. Make sure to visit youtube.com slash ETF Market Insights to watch previous episodes. And remember to hit subscribe so you receive a notification when we post new content and when we go live each Friday. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get started. Welcome back to ETF Market Insights. I'm your host, Erin Allen with BMO ETFs. And today we're going to be discussing different places to park your cash. And we're going to touch on the change in HISA ETF yields more recently. Uh, we're also going to walk through sort of this great migration, as it's being called, to cash and cash alternative products that we're seeing in the ETF market and chat through why now might be a good time to reevaluate and look at other options for uh, parking your cash. Before we do get started, a quick reminder that today we're not providing investment advice or recommendations. Today's episode, like all of our episodes, is all about providing education to Canadian do-it-yourself investors. With me today, I have my colleague, Matt Montemurro. Matt, welcome back to the channel. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Matt's the head of fixed income and equity ETFs and structured solutions here at BMO ETFs. Uh, Matt, the trend from 2023 definitely seems to be continuing uh, with this migration to cash ETFs, um, seeing them again, you know, gaining a lot of flows uh, in the first half of this year. But walk us through what we've seen so far this year in terms of investors in this cash trade. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, looking back to, you know, 2022, the trade as, you know, 2022, we saw rates go up. The trade for 2022, 2023 was that cash trade. We saw billions and billions of dollars move on into the sidelines. We saw HISA ETFs uh, gain about 30 billion in AUM. You know, GICs, they got, you know, we don't have actual numbers on it, but you can imagine the magnitude of, of billions that flowed into that type of ETF. And the question was, why is everything flowing to the sidelines? Well, with an inverted yield curve, investors were getting paid to literally wait out the volatility in the market. They were getting yields of over 5% to sit on the sidelines. And you know, for the most part, that's a pretty attractive trade-off for a lot of investors. So you know, as we moved into 2024, a lot of investors said, oh, cash trade is gonna be dead. This is gonna go away because now rate cuts are coming and they're coming sooner than expected. Well, what's happened so far in 2024 is that those rate cuts continue to get pushed out it later and later in the year. Right now we're seeing prices priced in for July or September, the first cut. When we started the year, we were looking at March. What that's done is it's made val it, it's added value to that cash trade. It's allowed investors to maintain that that short end exposure, getting that 5% yield without having to redeploy into the market. So right now we we do continue to see flows. They have slowed down. We're not seeing as much flow come into the cash trade. Uh, as we did in 2023, but they haven't stopped completely. So we're still seeing investors choose to sit on the sidelines, cap, clip that yield rather than kind of redeploy the rest of the market. And I would expect this to continue until we really start to see some meaningful rate cuts come to fruition. You talked about obviously the higher for longer yields, but like what are the reasons we're seeing this trend of investors moving to cash? Like what are the what are they really looking to do with this trade or what could they potential reasons for it? Yeah, so a lot of investors look at it and you know they have may have set income needs and getting a five percent yield meets a lot of investors' income needs. And you know, when you have fixed income in part of your portfolio, that's really a portfolio stabilizer. So to be able to get five percent income and stabilize your portfolio, you can leave the growth up to the equity side of your portfolio. Some investors also were you know, quite shaken from some of the negative returns that we saw in 2022. Both equity and stock markets had record low years. You know, at that point, they said to themselves, well, what am I doing? This is, this is, my, this is my retirement, this is my savings. A lot of investors looked to the short end, looked to that crash trade and said, 5% risk to lower my overall volatility. So 
more return from yield, less volatility, less risk, downside risk. It's a winning trade-off for a lot of investors. So really that's the type of strategy that investors are looking for. Reduce that credit risk if we're gonna go into kind of a maybe an economic slowdown. You know, those are the type of things that this cash trade it really solved a problem for investors. And I think the the whole innovation around ETFs and having an ETF structure for this cash trade has really been powerful too, right? Like having if you think about an online discount broker having a one line item that you can have for cash within your within all of your other equities and fixed income is really nice to have that one to one view and i know you've talked about that before is how like otherwise you're you're opening a high interest savings account it's sitting somewhere else and you're not really sure how it fits with the rest of your portfolio so that etf innovation i think has you know been paramount to, to what we're seeing too and then back in november um, we did a video that you were on where we touched on a lot of the changing regulations in the HISA ETF space and uh, how you predicted that would impact yields on these products, something that we have definitely seen take place um, beginning of this year. But what have we seen uh, some of these products do, these HISA ETF products do to remain competitive in light of these, you know, dropping yields on their products? Yeah, so you know, let's let's take a step back, and you know, the the big benefit of that Hisic ETF was that you know investors could look at that line item and use cash as an asset class. They could earn a premium to money market and to the overnight rate. So the overnight rates at five percent. You know, these Hisic ETFs were yielding five point five percent, fifty basis points above uh, overnight rate, twenty five. 30 basis points above money market, you know, it was it was a very attractive proposition for a lot of investors and solved the real problem. You know, when Aussie made that decision as of December, uh, October 31st, you know, coming into effect on January 31st of 2024, the expectation was that yields would come down. Market consensus was about 50 basis point was the estimate. Uh, we've seen on average about 40 basis points. The yields have come down for a lot of these products. Most of them are trading between kind of 475 to 5%. So let's call it a 25 uh, uh, 25 basis point discount to the overnight rate. And that's kind of where we would expect it to come on in, in the long run. So a lot of investors who were getting this premium yield, that 5.5% yield, and are now getting, let's say 490, that's a big difference. That's 60 basis points that they're missing out of that may have been something that was important to meet their income needs. So some of these HISA products are looking to add money market securities to try to enhance yield. Some are trying to add some short-term fixed income again to enhance the yield. But again, at that point, are you are you investing in a, in a high interest savings account ETF or are you at investing in a money market ETF? And that's what investors have to ask themselves. You know, am I getting a blend? Do I want a blend or do I want, if I'm gonna want a yield premium, maybe there's a better option like a pure money market ETF or a ultra short-term fixed income ETF, which can give you that yield premium. So that's the, the predicament that a lot of investors are in right now saying, I've seen my yield come down. I want to maximize yield. That's the reason I'm in this trade. What can I do now? Yeah. So we've seen these products incorporating some money market type securities. Walk us through, like, like I'm a first time investor, what, what a money market instrument is, you know, how it might differ from a HISA. Um, and then walk us through sort of the benefits of the strategy, like the most money market ETF set at MK. Yeah. So, you know, the HISA ETF is, or the HISA is a high interest savings account where money market securities are actual tradable securities in the market. They're ultra short term in nature. Uh, and they tend to be things like T bills. You know, uh, the government of Canada has T bills. U.S. Has, the U.S. Uh, Federal, Federal Reserve Bank has, has T-bills. Uh, we have T-bills for different provinces. So those are ultra-liquid short-term securities that provide a, a, a significant amount of security, but also a little bit of a yield premium. They tend to be a yield, yield premium to the overnight rate. You also then have corporate issuance. So there's commercial paper. There's ultra short term bonds. There's BA banker acceptances, which are actually going away in the market. So that's going to be a little bit of a change in the money market landscape. But all of these ultra short term um, securities generally pay a little bit of a yield premium to overnight rate, allowing investors to make a little bit more yield relative to that overnight rate. So right now, if you look across the board, you know money market yields are ranging from kind of five fifteen to 525 and that's kind of where we're seeing that sweet spot so again that is a 
15 to 25 basis point premium over the overnight rate. So for someone who's looking to maximize that cash allocation, money market securities uh, fill a gap that you know it used to be filled by these hissing ETFs, which they, they don't fill anymore. Money market, definitely a great alternative. And our ETF is priced very competitively at 13 basis point MER for ZMNK. Another option for investors who are, you know, maybe willing to take a slight step up the risk spectrum, and I mean slight, is our ultra short-term fixed income solution, um, ZST. So walk us through a bit more around ZST, Matt. Yeah, so, you know, this solution, the, the ultra short-term bond um, fund ZST, what it really does is it's for that yield-hungry investor. It's for that investor that wants to maximize the yield and is okay with taking a little bit more credit risk. So again, you are now investing in bonds and mainly corporate bonds. So you're getting additional risk than you would, let's say buying a Canadian T-bill because now you have, there's a corporate spread component. You're taking on the risk of the issuer, but these are very, very high quality issuers. So we're talking about a portfolio that is 60 to 70% Canadian banks, right? You're maximizing your yield by buying BMO, Scotia, CIBC, RBC, TD, National. You know, these are all very strong institutions. They're very stable institutions. And again, we're buying bonds that are zero to one year to maturity, and we're holding those bonds to maturity. So it's not necessarily, there is credit risk inherent, but the real risk is, do I think, let's say an issuer, do I think that the Bank of Montreal is going to default on its debt in one year? Do I think that RBC is going to default on its debt in one year? And if you look at the risk from that perspective, it's very, very low. If you look at historical volatility metrics, it's it's a little bit higher, yes, than money market in those HISA ETFs, but it is not significantly so. And in the current market, you're getting about from versus the, the HISA ETFs currently, if you're if you look at the average yield of about 4.9, you're getting about a 5.35 yield. So 40 plus basis point premium. You know, that makes up a lot of the difference there that those HISA investors, you know, lost from the OSFI decision. So we're seeing a lot of investors reconsider that cash position and look at it and say, okay, this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm in this cash trade to maximize my yield and still minimize and have a very high quality portfolio. ZST has been a very popular solution for investors to move money to that really want that extra, you know, 15 to 20 basis points over money market. Absolutely. And 17 basis point MER on that one, since I'm on the fee topic, uh, also very competitively priced. Um, seen interest rates, as we saw interest rates rise, we saw the yield to maturity on bonds also increase and investors can really now purchase bonds that are deeply discounted relative to the maturity value discount bonds. Uh, so for taxable accounts, that short term fixed income market in particular may actually offer attractive investment opportunities relative to some of these other cash trade ideas. So walk us through that idea a little bit more thoroughly. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a very unique structural benefit of, of owning fixed income. So owning bonds in the current market versus owning something like a GIC or a HISA. And the main structural difference here is that 2022, we saw rates go up and bond prices and yields are, are inversely related. So all the yields went up, bond prices went down, meaning that all the bonds in the universe in, in after 2022 were trading at a discount to par. So that means for ZST, we are buying these bonds at a price that's under $100 and we're owning it all the way to maturity. So we're riding that price up. So you're getting a capital gain portion. So let's take a step back on how fixed income is generally taxed. Well, you're taxed on the coupon that you earn as interest income. And so for a GIC, for a HISA, the yield to maturity, that top line yield you see is the coupon. So if you're getting 5% from a HISA, that's 5% coupon. So that's going to be 100% interest income. But if you're buying a bond at a discount, that means the coupon on the, uh, on the bond or buying the coupon on the portfolio is lower than the yield to maturity that you're actually going to earn. So for ZST, as an example, the coupon is 2.67%. The yield to maturity is 5 point, let's call it 3.5%. So if 2.67 is taxed as interest income. The differential between 5.35 and 2.67, that's going to be taxed as capital gains. 
which is a preferential tax rate. And if you go to compare, you know, a HISA versus something like ZST for an after-tax investor, we're talking about a difference of 75 to 100 basis points of after-tax return that you are keeping in your pocket because you chose the bond solution versus a HISA or GIC solution. And that is not, it, this is this is just structural in the market right now because we are investing in bonds and bonds as a whole are generally trading at a discount to par. So it is an excellent opportunity for investors and ZST for that taxable investor, not only can you enhance your yield, but you're gonna do a double enhancement of adding to your after tax return versus those competitors, GICs and HISSAs. That's huge. I, I love that. And I think it's a, you know something a lot of investors aren't even aware of. Um, so thank you for educating us on that. And you know for taxable accounts, it's, you know, it's definitely something to consider. Uh, so thanks, Matt. Thanks for all your insights around the cash trade and walking us through some of these great alternatives to HISA ETFs that are available through BMO ETFs. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. Coming up next week on ETF Market Insights, we will be breaking down the 2024 Canadian Federal Budget with VP and Director of Tax Consulting Services at BMO Private Wealth, John Waters. Uh, so he's going to provide an overview of the most significant uh, personal and small business income tax measures announced within the budget. So he actually sits in on that lock-in period uh, and is definitely a great person to be walking us through his uh, first uh, ideas around this budget. So this is an episode you should not miss. We will see you next week. Bye for now. Thank you for watching this week's episode of ETF Market Insights. To stream any previous episode of ETF Market Insights series, please visit youtube.com slash ETF Market Insights. Remember to hit subscribe and sign up for alerts so you know when we post new content. Also, we invite you to visit our accompanying website for ETF tools, education, and much more at ETFMarketInsights.com. Once again, thank you for watching. The session provided is for information purposes only. Any reference to a particular company or product is for illustrative purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell. Particular investments and or trading strategies should be evaluated relative to the individual's investment objectives and professional advice should be obtained with respect to any circumstance.